Omad Caroline. I'm actually studying. My goal is to study two hours at least five days a week. Um, I'm hoping to do it like Monday through Friday and then take off the weekends. Well, do things with Ted on the weekends. But um, yeah, it's crunch time. It is. My exam is December 16th, but most people say you have to invest like a hundred hours of study time and I have been slacking. But the good news is this woman works super good under pressure. That's what Ted just told me. Ted told me that last night because like I worked the kids a shop. I got some good study time in and got a hundred percent on my chapter test. So boom. But anyways, he's like, you're always good at crunch time. And Ted should know because we worked a lot together. Like, um, I don't know if I ever told you Ted's an engineer. And I actually got, I'm a consultant, like, into um, continuous improvement, project management, data analysis. So um, I've worked with Ted a lot at his um, company. So... I would go in for a consulting job, and guess what engineer was working with me? Boom. I call him the sexy champion. That could be sexual harassment. But anyways, so, um, yeah, so he says I'm good under crunch time. So I'm going to take that as a compliment and get after it. Could also mean that I procrastinate too much. But anyways, uh, that is not why I'm jumping ahead on here you guys I wanted to jump on here because I wanted to talk to you guys about maybe starting a different channel and you're probably like Caroline I thought you said you were cutting back on this channel you're you don't even edit your videos anymore your videos are horrific to watch they're not even you don't even put pretty music and splice data in there anymore I know but I'm making some really major life changes, you guys. and But they're life changes that have nothing to do with one meal a day, intermittent fasting, or weight loss, or fitness. And I think this channel, Omad Caroline's channel, I think I can keep fitness and um, weight loss or maintenance or transformation journey all on this channel. But... The lifestyle changes that I'm making outside of fitness and weight loss, I don't think there's going to be um, very good content for people that come on here. So, yeah. Let me talk a little bit about what I'm talking about as far as this other journey, all right? So, I'm going to start with a story, okay? So, as you guys know, I had talked about this watch on a few videos ago, but I bought this probably a oh, month and a half ago, but this is the Garmin Forerunner 645 Music, and I love it. I love it because um, I just, for a lot of reasons. But anyways, so when I found out I loved it, I always got to take care of Ted, my hubby Ted, because he's awesome and he deserves good things. So, um... I got done with a consulting job, got paid, and I ended up finding one for Ted. And he loved it. But before we had these watches, we had the Garmin Vivo Active HR before, which I like that too. The only reason we upgraded is I kind of wanted waterproof because, like I said, I want to kind of swim with it and then have music where I don't got to lug my phone. And also it's got live tracking. So that's going to be really great when I do my half marathon. Ted can kind of see where I'm at. All that good stuff. So anyways, um, but with the old watches, when my daughter came over, I said, Hey, Kay, do you want my old watch? And she was like, yeah, that's my daughter. I call her Kay. Her name's Kayla. She's amazing. But, you know, she had a baby just a year ago and she's still battling to get that baby weight off so I figured I'm gonna give it to her and she gonna use it and she loves it so um when Ted got his watch I was like I wonder if Ted Jr. would want it so my son Ted Jr. if you guys don't know he's the one who got me um focused on one meal a day intermittent fasting he is wise beyond his years and I love the guy so I give him a call to see if he wanted Ted's old watch so I call Ted Jr. I'm like, hey, 
you know, I got dad this new watch. Do you want the old one? I know you're running. It may be beneficial. And this is what he said to me. He was like, well, I'm not really into gadgets. Uh, I got a feeling that if I take it, it's going to sit there and and I'm not going to put it on and it's just going to take up space and it's not going to add any kind of positivity to my workouts or life, but it probably will even make me stressful because when I see it, I I know I should be using it and then I'm going to feel all this guilt because you gave it to me. So no mom, sell it or give it to somebody else. And I was like, wow. What a thoughtful way of saying that. And then number two, it's like I got to like listen to his thought process on whether to bring something in his life or not. And it started really making me think about um, Ted and Laura and their lifestyle. And (sighs) Ted and Laura, um, they have a beautiful home. They built a brand new home gorgeous home. They live in South Carolina, but they really do not have excessive amount of things. And to tell you the truth, I have never once, they've been married for years, never once heard Ted say, we're doing spring cleaning, or we got to clean out the garage. We got to clean out the attic. We got to clean out. Never heard that. But I think it's because they're so thoughtful about what they purchase and what they bring into their home and everything that they purchase, there's a place and a use for it in their life. And I think they're really good at not bringing things into their life. And I was like, wow. So that kind of piqued my interest. And um, I checked out a documentary on Amazon, I believe, called The Minimalist. And I watched a little bit of it. And then I... Instead, I was like, you know, on some days when I just go for a walk, I wouldn't mind, you know, listening to a book. So I ended up getting the book, The Things That Remain, I think it is. And I listened to that when we went on uh, that long four mile walk. I listened to that and I'm actually looking for it. And I actually listened to the book when I did my CrossFit training. I know that sounds silly, but it's a very interesting book. And I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to become a better consumer, if that makes sense. So um, I ended up calling Ted back and Ted had actually watched that documentary years ago, I guess, and, or at least knew about the guys that were in it. And he said that him and Laura kind of have that mindset. You know, they work really hard for their money and um, and and they want to spend it on things that are going to bring something good to their life. So I love that. So him and I talked about it and I said, I think I am ready. I think I think I am ready to get rid of all the excessive things in my home and And then we started about spring cleaning. You know, I said, I didn't even get to spring cleaning. And Ted goes, why do people have to have spring cleaning? That's, that's the problem is spring cleaning is a bandaid. Like it's a bandaid to being too high level of a consumer. So we spring clean, we purge stuff, and then we fill all of those voids back up with more stuff that we got to purge the next year. And I was like, oh my gosh, truth, truth, my son. So um, him and I talked and I said, yeah, I think I'm ready. And I do think there is a middle ground. So I kind of want to document the process, like, but I don't think I want to do it on this channel because I already get um, emails from people you know, that come on and said, I was looking for pointers on OMAD and all you do is talk about fitness and stuff like that. Your channel, you know, is deceiving. And inside I'm like, you know, it's true. I only do my once a month weigh in now, but I'm still going to stick fitness and how, and, um, and, you know, fitness and OMAD intermittent fasting. I'm going to leave it on this channel, but I do think I need to kind of move this other lifestyle journey to another channel. But yeah, so I'm thinking about starting that. You know, um, 
don't expect this to be a fast process. You know, I got to find time to go through everything, you know. And like my son said, he's like, Mom, just do a, a sell, donate, throw out. Just do that, you know, and, and he said, and make sure everything you keep is, is not for what if, but because you use it. I have so much what if crap in my home, you guys. And then Teddy was talking to me. I call my, my son Teddy, but he talked to me and he said, you know, mom, he goes, you have a blessing and curse. And he was talking about my artistic outlets, all right? So he said, you know, when I walk into your studio, everything you have in there, I know you can use and create something with. He said, but do you have the time to do that now? And so Teddy and I walked through our priorities and like my priorities in life. And guess what I use? I use my handy dandy um, little notebook to write the priorities. And um, he said, now you have this passion for health and fitness and you wanna help people. And he goes, and I think it's wonderful, but that's gonna take a majority of your time. I'm now a grandma and I am going to make sure I babysit my grandson, you know, up until the day he has to go to school because I just can't picture having him in somebody else's care, you know, especially in this day and age. And um, so, so Teddy said, so you've got your, your woodworking studio in the basement and you got your art studio upstairs. And he goes, how do you feel when you walk into them? And I have to admit, like I've been making a lot of like personalized masks for the kids' store and then I make the kids' um, t-shirts for their store that they sell. So I told him, I said, I walk in to my studio upstairs often and you know, I've been using the vinyl cutter and heat press and all that a lot, but when I do look at my canvases for painting, my sewing machines, the piles of fabric, I've got all of these cubicles of things with different kind of art stuff in them. And there's a little bit of guilt, like, oh my gosh, I really need to do that. You know, I've got all this leather working, like, you know, I made Ted a bunch of leather work for his motorcycle and my motorcycle, but I haven't even gotten back to that. So I've got all of this equipment and materials and stuff for different art outlets but do I really have time to do any of that anymore because my priorities have shifted heck I don't even know how often I had time and then when I go down into the basement to get my workout in you know in the basement gym on the other side is my woodworking you know area and it's like last time I worked out you know two days ago I was like I haven't been over in the woodworking area in months, in months. And like, I even got an email for a commission piece of, it's like a woodworking, it's like a wood epoxy resin LED sign that I make and they wanted to commission it, but I knew I didn't have time to do it. It's very time consuming. And even if I were, were to do it, it wouldn't be joy, it'd be more of a job. So that's what Ted and I sat and talked about, like what artistic outlet is actually bringing joy in that. I think I'll always keep the vinyl cutting machine and stuff because it benefits my daughter and her husband's store. I like, I, I love doing things for my kids. So I know that I will keep that. And then um, I love painting but I have so many canvases, so much art. I have so much oil paint, you guys. I don't even use oil paint anymore. I've really moved to acrylic. So it's like, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Not to mention the woodworking studio, the, the leather work, the sewing machines, like all of that stuff, all of it. It's never gonna get used. So I need to decide my artistic outlet. I have, I know the vinyl cutting machine and the heat press I'll keep, like I said, because it benefits the kids. So, but for my artistic outlet, I'll probably stick with acrylic painting. I probably will. 
I think I'm gonna downsize. I think I'm going to just stick with my one sewing machine, get rid of the sergers, the, you guys, there's just so much. There's so much that I don't need. So it's time. It's time to start going through everything and purging. Heck, you guys, I have five crock pots on these shelves up here. Five! So I told Ted, they asked, you know, I'm just talking about my art stuff. I'm talking about all the stuff that I have in cupboards, you know, and I, I don't even like, like my son said, he does not think I have too much, but there's stuff that can go. Like I said to Ted, I'm like, why do I have five crock pots? Why? And Ted goes, well, it's what if you have a family get together and there's that what if, you know? And I said, when am I ever going to have a big family get together? I used to have big family Christmas parties and have, you know, my my five sisters and their families, my brother and his family, my mom, dad, even my in-laws would come over. Giant, giant Christmas parties. Cook, every, like giant. And um, I just don't have it in me anymore. I just told Todd I don't think I have it in me anymore. And to tell you the truth, like, uh, my family, most of them walk around like we never really had family get together. So it's like when I did have them, did it really impact anybody, you know? So why, why put all that energy and time into it anymore? So yeah, it's just stuff like that. So I think I am going to start the paring down process. Um, definitely not going to be like the picture of minimalism. You know, you're not going to find me in a, at the end of this journey in a tiny house being pulled by my motorcycle and I'm living out of a suitcase. But I'm like, it's probably not going to become that, but I do think there's a middle ground. You know, I want to, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. That's what I want to be. And, um, and I can do better, you know, I can. So yeah, so that's what I'm thinking, you guys. Oh my God. It's 17 minutes. I need to get studying and I have blabbed too long. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of the other channel and if I should do it or if I should just go for it and just not document it. I just sometimes think, um, I just think in this world, like even being raised in that, you know, the the picture of success is having a lot of things but i think with having a lot of things comes stress you know like fixing those things sorting those things making sure those things are in place and i think there's going to be some freedom with um downsizing you know finding more and having less you know so yeah, but um, let me know what you guys think. Sorry this video got so long. I'm not going to edit it because I got to get to studying. And I hope you guys are having a super great week. All right, bye.